Happy Wednesday, everyone. I'm Brian, your Cards and Notes Nation, and this is another song reaction. Opeth, Moon Above, Sun Below, from the Pale Communion album. Um, I have not listened to that album, so this will be the first listen to this song, and um, I'll give you give you my honest reaction. Here we go.
Cheers to sanity in your head. Hold to go to destruction.
Okay. Only circles on the water. Well, um, as with o as with all Opeth, they're long songs, and they. Um, It's become more progressive over the years, which, I mean, that's, that's uh, Ackerfeld's interest, um, and that's the direction he wants the band to go in, um, and he surrounded himself with some pretty mighty musicians uh, along the way, and uh, the, the current lineup uh, is no different. So, Moon Above, Sun Below. Um, you know, Opeth is always broke with tradition and uh, convention. Um, the first thing that stands out to me with this song is how it's um, it's orchestrated almost like classical music is, in the sense that there's a lot of different pieces or movements that are stitched together um, but unlike classical music, it's it doesn't. Um, there's not always a seamless transition from one movement to the next. <clears throat> they use um, the lack of. Um, music, so uh, the, the silence um, also can be used in, in the form of rests. Um, so that's that needs to be considered as well, that the lack of music is, is part of the overall composition as well. Um, there's, it goes without saying that musically they they can do whatever they want on their own instruments. They've reached a point of mastery that allows them to do that. Um, and um, and so I have I have no qualms with, with who they are as, as musicians. I, I've always liked Opeth, although over the last five years or so I've sort of strayed away from um, listening to them almost religiously. Uh, speaking of that, religiously, the lyrics to me talk about somebody who, um, a religious individual who, um, I don't know how I want to say it, I, I guess it, it, it kind of comes to me as, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Hypocrite? You know, lyrics, the lyrics also are, are disjointed in the fact that, first of all, I don't see anything here that, that repeats. I don't see your, your standard um, verse and chorus. <sighs> Excuse me, I had a long night last night. <clears throat> Tired. Um, that, in part, is why I'm thinking so slow. Um, so, to try and find this continuity throughout <clears throat> the lyrics, you have to look deeper into it. And there's metaphor, and um, I, I'm not quite sure the direction he's going, but what I'm picking out of it is, is that... Um, there's an individual who's, you know, he's looking at him as a as a, as a hypocrite, um, preying on his flock, unhampered by guilt, seeking out weaker hearts. Um, moon above, sun below is is an indication of things reversed, flip flopped. Um, so that kind of starts to piece it together a little bit there, and then. Uh, the use of I, so he used third person you, and then he goes into um, 
first person I so this this flip-flopping between you know who who's he talking about um, and then ultimately um, you know things are dying fast <sighs> excuse me nothing ever lasts locusts await um, there's no help in the wake of our needs there's no help to dispel the pain the sense of hopelessness that there's there's not um, there's not a greater being out there that's going to help us. Uh, circles on the water, I'm not quite sure the reference there. Um, but ultimately, I think that's where he's going with the lyrics. That This uh, is one of those that you got to sit down and listen to um, and really put some, some extra thought into, I think. Unless it belongs, unless Pale Communion is uh, a, uh, a concept album that has continuity throughout. If it is, then I would have to listen to the other songs as well. Um, you know, I, I've always liked the softer part of Opeth when they're able to go into, um, the light distortion or clean sound, um, and when Ackerfeld put, puts in more of the bluesy solos, um, because I, I think that's, that's what caught my ear years ago when I first heard them um and the fact that they can that they do it so well um i i like frederick i don't i'm not quite sure how to sell it, say his last name Ackerson, something like that um as a guitar i liked peter lindgren but i think peter lindgren was too linear as a player uh Ackerson has has a style and a sound of his own um that complements ackerfeld's playing I think uh, more poignantly, and uh, the the interplay between the two of them, you know, it's it's easy to tell who's playing what when the sol for the solos for sure, and uh, it's it's a nice contrast. And Opeth has always been about contrast, um, so it's it's good to hear their more artistic side. Um, I know the the progressive sound isn't necessarily popular, but I, you know what? I never really bought into this death metal part of Opeth. Um, I just that's I never thought that that's truly what they were or where they were going. I think this is is more like it, um, and and the Sorceress album. Um, I think that's. That Pale Communion was right before Sorceress. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but I think the Sorceress album really shows that. Um, so, anyways, that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much uh, for tuning in. I hope you're going to have a, a safe and wonderful holiday season. Take care of each other. And um, we'll, I will talk to you in the near future. Thank you. Bye.